What did you watch last night? I watched an hour and 52 minutes of Davidson basketball is what I watched, mm-hmm. and it was incredible. Curry! I liked it about 84% more than I thought I would. I thought that it would be all right. I you th- thought that you wouldn't love it? It's a, it's a documentary about Steph Curry. Not to cut me off. Uh, no, I, I did. thought I totally <laughs> I meant thought, to. I thought I would like it, okay. but I loved it. I didn't think that I would love it as much as I loved it. I thought it was going to be much more cookie cutter. Here he is, good shooter. More of like your standard documentary where you talk a lot about, oh, the 50 Burger in New York and this and that and this and that. It was a wonderful look at Kitty Steph, Baby Steph, uh, high school Steph, college Steph. And I love, you know I love college basketball. So to go back and see all the footage of those Davidson games and the tournament runs and all the rest of it, I was surprised at how enamored I was with that trip down memory lane. Uh, I tell you what, uh, I don't want to spoil any of this for anybody. Uh, and so we won't you know, bring you different intricate pieces of it. In about 25 minutes, we are going to talk to Ryan Coogler, the producer of this. Uh, that's right. Yeah, we know people. And uh, he's an Oakland guy. He's a big Warrior fan. Big fan of 95-7 the game, mm-hmm. as it turns out. Ryan, what up? <laughs> but he's going to join us in about 25 minutes. And uh, we'll talk this whole thing out. So without spoiling anything, I-, I think what stands out is you're right. This is not about what I thought it would be about. And that's one of the reasons where you're like, well, gosh, you're going to do a documentary about Steph Curry. Well, what do we not know? I think we we know the Steph Curry story. Yeah. And the whole thing started, you were watching it during commercial breaks yesterday. Couldn't help it. Well, and you you mentioned about something after he hit the record breaking three pointer and that cuz it was in New York and Kevin Durant shows up to the if you want to call it after party. Oh, it was an after party. Yeah, it was just but it was small. It was like the inner circle yeah. for Steph Curry and he gave a little speech and and KD was there. And do you, do you remember what Steph said about Who are you? you? Remember what Steph said about KD? Like KD walks away. Yeah. And then the subtitle comes up of what Steph said about him. Do you remember what he said? I do remember. He said, that mother jumper is the most underappreciated guy in the NBA. Was it underappreciated or misunderstood? Misunderstood. 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 My fault. Yeah, that's I guess okay. I didn't remember what he said. Okay, it's Thanks, okay. You can go back and watch it again. I think I will. Yeah, and we'll try again tomorrow. Just kidding. It's Saturday. Yeah. We're not coming in tomorrow. Misunderstood. Misunderstood. I guess misunderstood. I, I met him... Or I heard him say that, and I thought to myself, underappreciated, but That's, misunderstood I mean, works. They're, they're related. They're absolutely related. I thought that was an interesting comment, but when you saw that yesterday, my mind went to, oh, so that's what this is going to be. This is all the stuff. We know the story of Steph, but this is all the stuff that we don't get to see. But it's not that. It's not. It is the story that you don't know. Because even though we know, and you might be old enough to remember Davidson's run to the Elite Eight, you don't know what happened before. I didn't know what happened before that. Right. Didn't necessarily know what happened after that. This whole thing starts really early and stays there. And it goes back and forth. And there's one of my favorite parts about it is the way they filmed it, which is like, they, they, they do these overlays of pro to college and then college to pro, even with some of his shots, where it's like from the same spot in the school. Incredible. Score. It was really cool. Good very, editing. V- yes. Very, very artistic. But my gosh, that Davidson thing, not only there's two things that really stood out to me, and it's an amazing story, as you'd guess. Two things stand out. One of them is he looks even smaller in that uniform than I remember. It, it's the most laughable thing you've ever seen he looks like the movie big when tom hanks gets small and he's in adult clothes at age 10 that's what steph curry in a college unit they couldn't find his size davidson does not make uniforms small enough to fit this kid when he was on the floor it's hysterical it's a really weird look and it's actually one of the first things christy said as we were watching it together last night she goes, it is unbelievable how scrawny that young man was. Yep. 
So that was one thing that stood out. The other thing that stood out was Coach McKillop. The Davidson head coach, the first game of Steph Curry's college career, he turned the ball over 13 times. And Steph admitted that he thought he was yeah. going to get benched. Spoiler alert. This well, is the, well, I thought this, this was a huge part of the story. Yeah, but, it, but you and get I, to see it. Like, I mean, you do, but I, that when I saw that, that was one of my takeaways because I didn't realize how bad he was in that game. And what happens after that is, is remarkable. And to have the footage, though, of that game, right. and you're watching it, and you're like, this can't be the same Steph Curry. This has to be like Steve Curry or some some imposter because you can't go from that, Mark. He's playing at Davidson, and you're that bad at that spot, and then you turn out to be this record-breaking goat of a player. The belief that Bob McKillop had in Steph and the courage to just be like, I'm going to take the hits. And I know you're like, there's no pressure at Davidson. Well, yeah, there is. This was kind of their one opportunity, Eminem, Mom Spaghetti, like, don't miss this opportunity. And so they knew they, they, they had to really go for it, and it was to the level of embarrassing. It was embarrassing what was happening out on the court. And he just stuck with him. And, and, and what kept going through my head was this guy, who he's become, potentially the greatest thing that sports has ever known here in the Bay Area. It wouldn't have happened if it weren't for Bob McKillop. Yeah. Because if he hadn't had that college coach believe in him, I don't think anybody ever would have found him. Nobody ever would have found this guy. Right. And that's just a tiny little kid running around. And it speaks to the recruitment, and they touch on it in the documentary about, you know, the assistant coaches who see him and how Steph wanted to go to Virginia Tech, but he wasn't recruited, and he wasn't recruited by so many places. And Davidson sees their opportunity. And to your point, Bob McKillop, when he gets him in, stands behind him even though his career doesn't start off in the best possible way and then all of a sudden the light bulb goes on and something clicks with uh number 20 i think you know he's wearing 20 in high school he was 30 at davidson, 30 at davidson. he wore 20 in high school and i was loving and the 20 was around his butt i mean the, <laughs> exactly. the, you can't fit a jersey on this kid yeah it's unreal man. and even the work he's done and just you know, and I think I mentioned this yesterday about his mom's is quoted saying, oh, he's 15, but he hasn't hit puberty yet. And you see the 15-year-old Steph out there, and he looks like he's about 10 playing against high school kids in an empty summer league-style gym. And it just it blows me away thinking about what you're talking about, how he went from that, just an, a small, scrawny, undersized, shoot-it-from-your-waist kid to now being the best shooter in the history of the game. Well, it, it, it's like, I don't know how many times this hit you while you were watching it, but while you're watching that story, which so many of us had not seen, to to have the knowledge of, of where it goes is literally not something that I think I can even comprehend. When you're watching this footage and you're listening to what his parents said about him as a kid, and you're looking at the jersey and the shorts just flop around on what looks like a 120-pound kid who is getting pushed around the court. When you watch that with the knowledge that that kid becomes one of the greatest players in NBA history and the centerpiece of four championships, it doesn't add up. It just it doesn't make sense, which is honestly the emotion I often have when I watch Steph. To me, it is why he's so special. It is why all the kids, he's quote-unquote ruined the game. I still watch Steph, and when he flicks his wrist from the other free throw line <laughs> at, right before the buzzer of one of the quarters and just, whoop, and, the, and, and like with accuracy, can shoot the ball from that far away, it doesn't make sense. And... One thing, and Grant Williams of the Boston Celtics said this on a different podcast just yesterday that came out, but Steph says it about himself in the doc a lot. He is just different. Different. Different than anyone. And I think that, that it helped for me capture what makes Steph so special because there's all kinds of great players. You can be like, LeBron's different. Right, but look at the body. The body's different. And he's worked on it. There's something, there's something about Steph that is almost, 
I don't know if I can capture the word. It's otherworldly. It's magical. Yes. It's magical. And it, it's remarkable because he obviously has genetic gifts. His father, in his time, and even in the time now, is one of the greatest shooters of all time. His father was a knockdown shooter. His mother was a Division One athlete. So he was given genetic gifts just based on being born. And that's, you know, the genetic lottery we talk about. He won the lottery by being, by being born, born, as we talk, yep. we always talk about the Pearl Jam song. He definitely got legs up based on who his mom and dad are as athletes themselves. But then you watch him as a young man in the documentary, and they even go into describing the summer where he had to change his shot because he was shooting from the waist. And his dad told him, you know, Steph, and if you're going to be, if you want to be as good as you want to be, we've got to get the ball, your release point from your navel to up off your forehead. And Steph talks about what that process was like, longest summer of his life, and, you know, couldn't take a shot outside the key and all the rest of it. And you actually see the footage. And this is why I, I so love the doc because it wasn't like, they just talked about it with some random B-roll. You see Steph Curry as a 14 or 15-year-old in his backyard with home video. Yeah, I, you know what? That's a, that's a great poll, um, and I love that part, too. By the way, you're listening to 95.7 The Game, KGMZ, FM, and HD1, San Francisco, always live on Twitch, YouTube, and the free Odyssey app. I remember that year of my life, too. I, I, was, I was a chess shooter. And and for my little youth basketball league, a pretty good one. I, I was a shooter, and uh, and and an eventual high school basketball player. And that that whatever that year is, where somebody who matters to you tells you, dude, you got to get your shot up here. The mental grind, the feeling is, I'm never going to make another basket again. I can't do this. I'm not strong enough to do this. Why am I doing this? My shots are going in. It's hard. And I was doing it at a level like who cares. It's not like right. I ever thought I was going to be a basketball player growing up. No, but the process is the equally yeah. arduous. It, it doesn't matter. It, like For crazy. me, it was going from a two-hand backhand to a one-hand backhand. And again, same thing, like low-level college, you know, JC player, but it's having to go through the mental struggle of, I'm never going to be able to do this. And in the doc... Steph describes, or his mom actually talks about how there were times where he wanted to give up. Imagine For that. Sure. Steph Curry gives up. Gives up. Warriors don't have a title, kid. That's what I mean, man. You watch the doc, and there were some. There were sliding doors moments. Yeah, there were sliding that. sliding doors moments of like this goes one way, and you become one of the greatest basketball players in the history of ever. This goes that way. We never even meet you. We do not yeah. meet you. You are running the front desk somewhere. Like, we never would have even met you. And Hi, I welcome to the Hyatt. I'm Steph. <laughs> uh, here's your room key. And uh, Continental Breakfast is at 9. I don't know why I went there. but Why is it always? <laughs> I don't know. It's the <laughs> same voice this, every time. Kyle Shanahan meets Tiger Woods. <laughs> and, and, and Steph, the failed basketball player, gets bored. Hi, what is uh, going on here? My name's Stefan, and I hope you enjoy <laughs> your stay. Check out times at 1130 and stuff. Hey, it's Tiger. Totally. <laughs> and you're like, where am I hearing this totally. voice from? I can't even see anyone over the desk. Where is right. there somebody there? Oh man! It, like, welcome to the Hyatt. I, <laughs> this is Stefan. I think it, you mentioned the working other working at the Hyatt is a great job. No, it is. Yeah. I'm not demeaning it. I love Thank the you. Hyatt. I'm looking forward to being there next Wednesday and barging in on Steiny and Goo. Damn right. You mentioned the sliding doors moment. The other one is Bob McKillop, yep. and I hope we can get him on the show. And I know we can as we get closer to the season. He's always a good guest, but. Watching Bob, not only the patience that he showed with Steph, but the way that he built that team up. Because, and this is not a spoiler, if you remember the Davidson run, his freshman year didn't work out so great in terms of postseason. His sophomore year is when they made the great run to the Elite Eight. And just watching the way Bob coached up the whole team to be a good team, and of course Steph becomes the best player on that team, is a part of what became for Steph. So watching this last night, and again, uh, Ryan Coogler, who is the producer of this movie, this documentary, is going to join us here in just a little bit over 10 minutes. Uh, so make sure you stay tuned for that local guy from Oakland. Many of you know the name. So watching that doc and then waking up today and just surfing around and looking at stuff and seeing Grant Williams. You all remember Grant Williams of the Boston Celtics? Seeing him talk at length about the mental side of the NBA Finals last year 
I thought was really cool. You get to a point where there are certain NBA players who it felt like Grant will someday in his NBA career is still going. He was involved in that trade uh, just a few weeks ago, I think. Um, but Grant Williams, he spoke like someone who someday will be like, I can't wait to sit down and tell my grandkids that I was on the floor with Steph Curry. This is somebody who's teammates with Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. And it was like, yeah, 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 that's nice. I was on the floor with Steph Curry. It was almost like he was honored to lose to him. He made the statement that he goes, we are, we are up two games to one, and the Warriors are coming in to a road game in Boston, and we have the lead, though a small one, we have the lead for most of the night. And we are on the sideline, and you can feel the energy of we are going to win the NBA championship. Like we might be going to Golden State for game five, and we are going to win a ring in the fifth game at Chase Center. And he goes, and then something happened to that man. Something happened. And we never won another game again. And he just showed he is different. He is different. So when you get to the point where high-level professionals are saying that about you, I mean, it, it just makes your mind go to a bunch of different places. Now, here's one thing I wonder what you think after watching it. So we've had all these conversations in recent weeks about the importance of Draymond Green or the importance of his splash brother or Steve Kerr or Bob Myers uh, the whole Warrior organization, the way Steph uh, handled and feels about Jordan Poole or beyond. If you buy into the idea, oh, he different, was this inevitable? Was everything that happened in his pro career inevitable? Or how much credit goes to what was around him? I think a lot goes to what's around him. A lot of the credit goes to what's around him, and all the credit, for the most part, goes to Steph himself because you look in the dock and it's toward the back end of it where they start to kind of speed through his NBA arc. And for those people who think that this is a Golden State Warrior documentary, it's about 85% before he became a Warriors and about 15% after. There's some modern footage, there's some interviews, so just go in with the right expectation. But one of the, the things they do toward the end of it is that montage of injuries, right? And it's like, oh, the ankle again. Yep. And Steph comes up limping. Dude, and It was more times than I even remembered. Exactly. It was like, and my gosh, that's like his quick ninth hit. ankle bloop, injury. Bloop, bloop. And so, yes, it is a lot of what's around him. Steve Kerr, Draymond Clay, uh, Bob Myers, the logo Jerry West, you know, Joe Lacob and Peter Goober. This organization becoming the Warriors that we all know it to be. And you talk about sliding doors moments. What if Joe Lacob and Peter Goober never buy the Golden State Warriors? Mm -hmm. If Chris Cohan decides that they want to keep the Warriors, or Joe Lacob buys the team and decides not to trade Monte Ellis, and you know Monte and Steph end up playing together, and maybe it doesn't work, and they decide to move off of Steph before he becomes the greatest of all time. There's so many things that worked out, quote unquote. But one thing that I took away from it was the amount of work that this guy does. Oh and we know that he works hard, but you see him in the weight room, and you see him with Brandon Payne, his personal coach. Yeah, where do you see his workout? Just like... That was wild. And Brandon's like, add the tennis ball. <laughs> he's he's doing all these dribbling and like hitting things, and like now he's juggling tennis balls, and he's sprinting and hitting threes. And again, this is not a spoiler, because we all know that his routine... Is very no, but unique. just wait till you see it. Like there's it's nothing awesome. like seeing it. There's nothing like seeing it. So I don't think that I'm gonna buy the sense of it being inevitable. And I think about the late Kobe Bryant, who was born with as much talent, if not more, than Steph Curry naturally. Oh gosh, for sure. But nobody's ever worked harder on his craft than Kobe Bryant. So Kobe became Kobe because of his work ethic. Yes, he had a leg up genetically and all the rest of it, as did Steph. But Steph doesn't become the greatest of all time without an undeniable and un unquenchable work ethic. Mm. 
Yeah, it's uh, it, it's it's really something else. And for me, the timing of it to tuck it into everything that we're all doing now, you know, it, it is is sort of to say if you acknowledge all of that, if you watch this doc, this movie, and you sort of feel some of the things that we're feeling, I wonder if it helps people get to a spot where I don't want to speak for you, where I certainly am, which is, can y'all just forget about everything else with the Warriors? Just put it all aside. Steph is here, and everything needs to be about that until he's not. So there's no more, but but this young player needs me. Stop. <laughs> It is all about this man. Him. It is all about what this man thinks is the right thing to do. He is every bit of what a quarterback is in the NFL. You wouldn't go to Peyton Manning, for example, and look at him and be like, I know that you think that this guy is a better receiver for you, but we got a lot of capital put in this guy over here that we drafted in the second round two years ago, and Peyton's like, he can't play. Well, too bad. You wouldn't do that. This needs to be an all-in vibe, if, in my opinion. And I do think that the Warriors agree. But I wonder why more of the fan base doesn't, and I wonder if watching this movie will help you all with that. Forget about everything else. An example, if Kaminga can help this year, rock on. That would be great. If he wants to buck and he doesn't develop and he doesn't hit shots and it's not, then get out of the way. I don't care where you were drafted. Steph is here. Steph is here. And I want to save her every single minute. Yeah. And, and the organization should, should feel the same. That's a great way to put it. And I hope that some of his teammates who have made it more difficult to be a Warriors fan of late. I hope some of those teammates watch the doc and have that same sort of awakening because, you know, Draymond Green has made it challenging of late and at times to to do exactly what you're talking about, which is focus on the fact that you've got one of the greatest players of all time playing right now. And Steph might only have three more years in the NBA, so let's cherish it. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, you know, I, I just... And by the way, is Draymond one of those people? It doesn't seem like it. It certainly doesn't seem like it. They are they're they're partying in Tahoe. They're warm embraces. Steph clearly thinks that Draymond had to be a part of the remainder of his NBA career. However, there are also reports that people, for instance, when Draymond continues to talk about Jordan Poole and then get into an argument with his dad on social media, that the organization's upset. They're they're annoyed. They're annoyed at what happened earlier this week. Absolutely. I wonder what Steph thinks. Well, and I think that this documentary drops at exactly the perfect time because we can all use it as a palate cleanser. As we talked about earlier in the week, yep. the majority of Warriors conversation of late has been of more of a negative, negative bent to it. Chris Paul is here. Woe is us. Draymond Green won't give it a rest. But now we can talk about this unbelievable documentary – 